Hello students. In this video I'm going to close read a couple of Wallace Stevens' poems uh, with an, in an effort to answer that question about what poetry should be, specifically how would Wallace Stevens answer that question or how did he answer that question with his poetry. Um, and I'm actually going to jump to the finish line for this first one. So Wallace Stevens is sometimes called an ontological poet. Um, ontology, a nice fancy vocabulary term, is the study of the mind and what or how it perceives. And so this first poem we're going to look at uh, is very much in that Wallace Stevens vein. Uh, he is thinking about human perception, how a very small change can make a radical difference in what we uh, think about a topic. So to do that, we're going to take a look at a poem Wallace Stevens wrote titled Anecdote of the Jar. I placed a jar in Tennessee and round it was upon a hill. It made the slovenly wilderness surround that hill. The wilderness rose up to it and sprawled around no longer wild. The jar was round upon the ground and tall and of a port in air. It took dominion everywhere. The jar was gray and bare. It did not give of bird or bush like nothing else in Tennessee. This is a short poem. Uh, it may appear strange to begin with, but I want us to try to pay attention to the way that the simple act of placing a jar changes the way the human mind perceives um, that piece of land. So initially, before the jar is there, um, Wallace Stevens says, or the speaker of this poem says, basically all of it is wilderness. Um, what, what is wilderness? Wilderness is um, spaces without any human presence, undifferentiated nature, nothing but nature, right? So what does the act of placing a jar on a hill in the middle of the wilderness do to the human mind? Well, first you have to think a little bit about what a jar is. A jar is not uh, a great example of nature. Uh, a jar is a human creation. And so if we assume that humans are not part of the wilderness or not part of nature, which is a fairly common uh, assumption, not necessarily true, but that jar is a, is a product of human culture. And so it doesn't really belong in wilderness and it almost creates a center point. Um, notice that the jar, it's the it here, the jar made the slovenly wilderness surround that hill. So now all of a sudden there is a, a center point to that wilderness and it is the jar. Um, uh, look at what else the jar does. The jar took dominion everywhere. There's that simple act of placing a jar somehow changes the wilderness into uh, a space where humanity now is. This jar takes power, uh, completely changes our perception of the landscape. And this does happen. Uh, if you've ever been walking in a very natural place that feels like wilderness, and then you come upon an old chimney, or you come upon, across uh, a piece of railroad track, it's, it's amazing how quickly your brain changes. And you go from feeling like you're in the center of the wilderness and the center of nature to recognizing that uh, actually you're not, right? So your perception changes. Or, or if, you, if you simply saw one piece of uh, ugly garbage in the middle of a beautiful park, um, perception changes. So that is one of the reasons people refer to Wallace Stevens as an ontological poet. His poems are very much about how we perceive our world, the work that the mind does to create a feeling or an understanding for our environment. So now we'll press on and look at one more poem. And this is one where uh, Wallace Stevens is definitely thinking about what he thinks poetry should be. It's the last poem included in our uh, anthology of modern poetry here on page 785. And the 
uh, margin comments that were in my copy, which is the copy I used to make the PDF, um, provide some of the answers to that question about what poetry should be according to uh, Wallace Stevens. The poem of the mind in the act of finding what will suffice. It has not always had to find. The scene was set. It repeated what was in the script. Then the theater was changed to something else. Its past was a souvenir. And here is the section of the poem where he really gives us some good terminology for what he thinks poetry should be. It, the poem, it has to be living to learn the speech of the place. It has to face the men of the time and to meet the women of the time. It has to think about war and it has to find what will suffice. That phrase, what will suffice, appears, I think, three times in this poem. That's a phrase that's definitely worth thinking about. But as you read through these modernist poets, I really want you to be paying attention to what they're saying about poetry and what it should be. So, so here are a few lines that help us realize um, what Wallace Stevens's answer would be. So he comes out and tells us, poetry should be an act of the mind, finding what will suffice. And that phrase is just fascinating to me. Um, it's almost like poetry is meant to be um, a, a life preserver. One of the things lifeguards throw out to people um, so, that, so that they can survive, so that they can find what will suffice. But maybe that phrase means something a little bit different to you. But there, clearly it's important to Stevens. Poetry should be an act of the mind. And the thing that the mind is doing is finding what will suffice, what will get us through. Just worth thinking about right now. The world is crazy at the moment. Um, and then those same lines that I highlighted show Wallace Stevens saying that poetry needs to be in touch with the present. It needs to meet the men and women of the times. It needs to be about war, so it needs to be serious, not trivial, uh, not, not silly. Uh, and it needs to be alive. It, it needs to grab people. And uh, in 2020, uh, we may not feel that Wallace Stevens's poetry is that way, but in his own era, people were um, people appreciated the way that Wallace Stevens was writing vigorous poetry. Uh, he was invigorating a style that uh, invigorating a genre that. Um, maybe wasn't always in touch with what was happening in the moment. So hopefully that helps a little bit in unpacking Wallace Stevens. He's not an easy poet because he is so interested in the mind and how it perceives, um, but hopefully that helps a little bit. And so the reading also includes uh, some poems from William Carlos Williams and uh, the assignment will ask you all to do some thinking and discussing about how he answers that question, what should poetry be? And I'll be asking you to provide some specific words that he would use and also uh, some lines from the poems that support your reading.